All right, we're going to get started. We're still talking about radians. We're still talking about the, the circle, the unit circle, all vocab words we've heard before. Nothing we hear today is going to sound crazy, crazy new, but we do need to learn a new skill that exists in the world that we already understand. Sounds like radians yesterday started off really kind of gross and then it gets better and better and better. You don't have to do this on your paper or maybe you could flip over to the back of your notes. Let's just do a really quick sketch and let's build a really quick, you know, we'll do a little circle here. And let's get one full lap kind of labeled. So this starting position over here, we can call this zero. So where would we put the pi? Uh, on, the opposite end, zero. on the opposite end, pi can go here. And where would we put something else? You help me fill this out. Pi over two. Where's pi over two going? Pi. pi over two is going at the top because it's half of a pi. I'll make my pi look a little bit nicer. Pi over two because it's half of a pi. And Three pi over two. nice job, that's the one. I mean, we will get to harder ones, but for now, that's probably the one that's the hardest. 3 pi over 2, and then we can finish this out by going with 2 pi. Now, we can start to memorize these things, and hopefully in our brain, you guys have already doing this, come up with some similarities, degrees, and radians. So 0 is easy. 0 is 0. Let's also label this with degrees. Pi halves counts as how many degrees? 90. That's right. This is 90 degrees, right? These two things, they're basically two different ways to say the same word, right? It's kind of like two different languages. Pi would be 180, and then this would be 3 pi hat, oh, 270. And then 2 pi is, of course, 360. Now that's all great. We can figure all this stuff out, and I could say, hey, Pi halves, how many degrees is that? And you could say 90. Or I could say regular, plain old pi, how many degrees is that? And you could say it's 180. But we want to learn how to convert other things, right? What if I asked you pi divided by 4? How many degrees is that? And that's one that you might even be able to just kind of reason out in your head and figure it out. 45, 45 is right. What if I asked you about 7 pi 6, all of a sudden, whoa, we're getting a little bit, we're getting a little weird. It might be, we could maybe still do this one in our head, but we're kind of figuring. So let's figure out how to kind of convert things around. Now, have you guys ever learned how to convert one thing into another thing? Surely, right? You do it in science class, you do it in math class, you do it all over the place. And the reality is, it's not really any different the different times that you learn how to do it. So, so let's say that we wanted to turn in, oh, inches into feet, right? Inches and feet, they're both distance. And so maybe I tell you, oh, you know, I'm 70 inches tall, but what the heck does that mean, right? How many, like, that's not how we say it. So, so how can we convert that? So if we start and let's just use 70 inches as kind of a starter, how can we convert that into feet? So what we want to do is we want to come up with kind of a converter here. And the converter always wants to be a fraction where the two things are equal on the top and the bottom, right? That way, it's kind of like a fraction that just equals 1 because it's equal on the top and the bottom, but they're in the two different kind of modes. So when we're talking inches and feet, give me two things that are equal to each other. 12 what and one what? 12 inches and one foot, right? Those are, those are equal things. And so our fraction wants to be 12 inches and one foot. And then the last piece is which one goes on the top and which one goes on the bottom. And think about it like this. If we have inches and we're trying to turn it into feet, 
then we need to get rid of the inches, right? And so we want to divide by the inches. That way, those inches will go away. So if you think in your brain, we need a converter, we have inches, so divide by inches to get rid of those inches. That's really the key to the entire lesson today. So like he said, 12 inches versus one foot. Those are the same. And now when we do this 70 and this one divided by 12, how is this 70 connected to the one over 12? Is this gonna be 70 plus one over 12? 70 divided by one over 12? It's gonna be 70 times one over 12. So in your calculator, go ahead and do that for me. 70 times alpha y equals one, 12. Obviously you don't need to put in anything for feet or inches. And tell me what you get. What do you got? Yeah. All right. We got 5.83. Now, what if you said, Mr. Collier, how tall are you? And I said, well, I'm 5.83 feet tall. Is that how we communicate height? Not really. That's not really how we talk about it either, right? If I ask Dory how tall he is or anybody how tall they are, they're gonna tell me maybe they're 6'1", maybe they're 5'8", maybe, you know, who, whatever. So this is low-key still not how we want it to look. Okay, the five is fine. This person is, is five foot tall, but how many inches is 0.83? So what if we took that 0.83 and we converted it back into inches? Just, just stay with me. We got 0.83. We're gonna times it by a fraction. Now this 0.83 is 0.83 feet. And now let's set up, but wait a second. Do we wanna use the same fraction that we used last time? We wanna flip it upside down. Right now we have 0.83 feet. So when we set up our fraction with 12 inches and one foot, this time we want to do it the other way. We want to have 12 inches on the top with one foot on the bottom. That's because we're trying to convert the other direction. Instead of going in to feet, now we're trying to go backwards into inches. So once we go into the calculator and we type 0.83 times alpha y equals fraction 12 divided by 1. What do you get then? 9.96, which is probably a rounding thing. It's probably supposed to be 10, right? Cool. And what is that 10? 10 inches. And so there we go. That is the height of the person. They're 5 foot 10 inches. Now today, are we going to be talking about how tall people are? No, we're not, okay? But it's very worth talking about before we get into the world of degrees and radians and people start going, oh my God, this is so hard. The reality is we've used a equality that one foot is equal to 12 inches. And very importantly, depending on which direction we were going, we had to flip the, the fraction upside down. If you're trying to get rid of inches and turn into feet, then divide by the inches. But if you're trying to get rid of feet, then put the feet on the bottom to divide it. Okay, so let's go back. Again, we have seven pi sixths. Let's go back again and let's get to our notes here. Nice, our angles in standard position. Let's fill this out quickly. We've got, maybe you've already done this. Zero, pi halves, pi, three pi halves. This would be two pi. And I might even add on there as well that, you know, this is 90 like we talked about. 
This one is 180 like we talked about. This one is 270 like we talked about. This one is 360. So now we've got all those things together. Conversion between degrees and radians uses the basic relationship that blank radians equals blank degrees. So now instead of 12 inches equals one foot, think about it with degrees and radians. How many radians equals how many degrees? Love that. So good. I really appreciate you volunteering that. What she just said is that 2 pi equals, well, we'll do this way, 2 pi equals 360 degrees. Do we, that should be something that doesn't complicate us, doesn't scare us at all, right? A full lap equals a full lap. 2 pi equals 360. Everybody's good with that. Cool. So let's make a fraction out of this like we did with the inches and feet. So if I make a fraction, 2 pi over 360, we can use that to go ahead and convert anything from degrees to radians. Now, if we look for just a second, how come it says convert degrees to radians, multiply degrees by pi radians divided by 180? Why is it using pi 180 instead of 2 pi 360? It's the same exact thing. It's just a simplified fraction, right? We've got a 2 on the top and a 360 on bottom. And if we just make this half as big for the rest of our life, that's a good thing, right? You cut them both in half. What is half of 2 pi? It's a single pi. And what is half of 360? It's 180. Again, this should be obvious. Is pi the same thing as 180? Yes, so now we can use this to go back and forth from one world to the other. Now, this spot right here, it says to convert degrees to radians, multiply by pi radians divided by 180. Number two says, in order to convert radians to degrees, multiply by 180 over pi radians. So basically, these are the same two fractions but they are upside down from each other. So you need to make sure, you know, the, the common mistake is you do your whole worksheet today and you do every single one with the same fraction, but the reality is you gotta be careful and kind of flip that fraction back and forth. So I'm gonna kind of mess up the board here, but good enough. We're gonna zoom in. I'm just gonna erase this because you cannot use the jet, I don't even know it. What are we doing here? Can I? Because the current page. Because the current page has too many shapes? <laughs> now I can do. Honestly, I don't have any idea. Okay, I, I just can't. Okay, I can zoom in a little bit more. Good enough. Convert each angle in degrees into radians. So all we need to do is take this 30. Multiply it by a fraction, and we'll be getting an answer. Now that fraction is pi over 180, or 180 over pi. And so think about it like this. Right now, we have degrees, and we're trying to get rid of those degrees. And so in the bottom, we're going to put 180 degrees. That way, the degrees will be gone. And so on the top, we just put the other one, which is pi. Now, we're going to use our calculator. If you type this into the calculator, you're going to get something really quite crazy, I bet. All right? You're going to get something really kind of weird. So why is it so weird in the calculator? Now, it says convert each angle in degrees into radians. When we have radians, we don't typically use decimals. We use things like pi halves or pi thirds or pi sixths or something like that. And so for this question, we're going to want our answer to be a fraction. And that thing you're looking at in the calculator is not a fraction. Can you press math 
inner inner or math frac and turn it into a fraction in the calculator. You guys know how to do that? The math button is like near the top left. If you press math enter enter, does it work? Yeah. It makes a fraction? It does? What fraction you got? So you just say random things? No. It if, is. It is a fraction. So you type 30 times parentheses. No, I'm exactly thinking a fraction is top left. Okay, that's from the last question or something. I don't know what that's from. So here's what's going to happen. If you try to press math, enter, enter, it probably doesn't work. Is that true? It just stays as a decimal. And here's why. We have a pi here, and pi is an irrational number. Pi cannot be a fraction. And so when we include pi into the formula here, it's going to get really messy. It's going to become a decimal, and we're going to be stuck as a decimal. So big moment. Sleepy boys, maybe sleepy girls, wake up a little bit. When we go to type this in, when you go to type in pi divided by 180, you don't actually want to type in the pi. Instead. What you really want to do is type in just, I guess it's hard for me to do this with my pen. You really just want to type it in like this, 30 times 1 over 180. So now let's go to our calculator. Let's type 30 times parentheses alpha y equals 1 over 180. Clear it out here, 30 times parentheses, since I can't trust anybody to type anything in anymore. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> when I type this in, the calculator tells me one sixth. That's what we got? Now that's not the answer. The reason it's not the answer is because remember, it's supposed to have a pi. We held off on the pi, we held on to the pi, but before we finish the question, we got to put the pi back. And so the final answer is 1 pi over 6. Or if you want to be fancy, you could just write it as a simple pi over 6. All this stuff that I've been saying, at the end of the day, take your degree, multiply it by 1 over 180. And if you do that and you slap a pi on there, you're done with the question. So let's look at 90. Oh, 90. I already know 90. What's the radian for 90? Pi over 2. Perfect. All right, I'm not going to waste my time on easy questions. I already memorized that one. Next, negative 135. Okay, negative 135 times parentheses alpha y equals 1 over 180. Mine says negative 3 fourths. Slap a pi on there. Now I'm good to go. You can put it on the top. You can put it on the back. You can, you can have it either place. You just should not have that pi in the bottom. That would be incorrect. But, you know, other valid answer. That would also be a totally legitimate answer if you wanted to write it like that. Okay, let me ask you this question. What if I said convert each angle in degrees to radians, but I want it to be a positive fraction? I don't want that negative fraction. Okay, can we just put positive 3 fourths pi? Not exactly. Okay, if we wanted this to make and end up being a positive radian, what we could end up doing is maybe use our coterminal degrees, right? Negative 135 plus 360. That gives me 225. And then I take that 225, I do the same thing. 225 times parentheses, alpha y equals enter, 1 over 180, enter. This time it's telling me 
5 over 4, and I put a pi on there, and I'm done. Oh, you could add 2 pi to the fraction if you like working with fractions in that way. That's another way. I mean, all of this is, it's all the same, right? As long as you follow the math rules, you can kind of do it however you like to do it. Okay, we've only got four questions left on the notes, and then we're done for the week. So let's power through this. Convert each angle in radians to degrees. So same thing. You're going to take your piece here. You're going to multiply it by a fraction, but this time... This time we want to do it the other way. We don't want to get the 180 on the bottom to get rid of degrees. We want to put the 1 on the bottom. Now if we type this in, alpha y equals inner, pi over 3 times alpha y equals inner, 180 over 1. I'm getting a decimal. And if I try math inner inner, it's, it's still giving me a decimal. Now it's giving me the decimal 188. And when I think about 188, 188 is right here in the third quadrant. But pi thirds should not be in the third. So we got some kind of problem. What have we messed up so far? So you need to decide if you're going to be keeping the pies or getting rid of the pies. For this question, we have a pie written right here. So we would want to make sure that those pies canceled out. So if you're ever going to be typing in one pie, you got to make sure you're typing in two pies so that those two pies are opposites and they get rid of each other. So if we go back, I use the up button to scroll up. And I grab the other function. I replace that with a pi. Now I'm getting the answer. A nice, beautiful 60. A nice, beautiful 60. What do you got? So think about just put one also. If you want to do 1 third times 180 okay. over 1. Wait, what did you do? I typed it in with the pies. I mean, it helps me, it helps me keep myself straight with the pies because then I know... I have a pi, I get rid of a pi, I should be in degrees now. If I leave out all the pies, sometimes I get... Oh, it out. Right. And that helps me think, like, nice, radiance gone, <laughs> degrees are coming. Okay, let's do this quickly. Negative 5 thirds pi, all right, cool, times 180 over pi. And I know that's right because I have a pi on the top and a pi on the bottom, and those are going to go away. In your calculator, type in the pies or don't type in the pies. It's up to you. I really recommend that you use alpha y equals, something I say over and over again. I did all that. Anybody got a number? Negative 300 degrees. And what if I said I want a positive degree? Add 360. Add 360. And what would it be? Son of a gun, 60 again. I can't keep getting away with this. So true. Three pi fourths. I'm just going to sit here and wait for somebody to shout out the answer. Same process. 135. Take your 3 divided by 4 and multiply that by a 180 over 1. If you want to put the pies in there, put the pies in there, but just make sure you have a nice balance. Now, this last one is the very last question for the whole week. I'll put a star on it. I'll put a tricky on it. This question is weird. This question is strange because it just says one radian. The rest of them all say pi thirds radians. And so the number, which is very usual, comes with a pi. 
When this says one radian, strangely, one radian is about that much. Because it takes pi radians to get all the way to 180. So this is, this is basically just something that is missing the pi. And so when you go to make your formula, don't overcomplicate it. Number one times, parentheses, 180. And we can just do it all like that. But this one doesn't come with a pi, so just leave the pi off. And what should happen here is we're going to get a much ugly, I mean ugly is not the right word, but a much uglier, messier number because we only have one pi in this equation, which means we're having this irrational number thrown into the mix. 1 times alpha y equals enter 180 divided by pi, and I get 57.295. Maybe I round that to 0 0.3. So if you get a number and it just says straight up 2, well, if there's no pi, there's no pi. When you do your equations, make sure you, those, those are, those are kind of strange because we end up with a decimal and irrational number. Okay, we've done all this stuff. Here's what you got. Really quick, if I give you 5 pi elevenths, what is this? Radians or degrees? Radians, and I want you to convert it into the answer is a degree. How am I going to set up my fraction? 180 over pi, because I have a pi here on the top that I want to get rid of. So they'll be opposites. And that's how I know to set it up one way and get it into the other. Okay? And of course, the opposite is true. What if I tell you 72 degrees, convert it, and give me a radian at the end? OK, that means I want to divide by degrees so that my degrees go away and my pi is left. Like we talked about, don't really type in the pi. Keep the pi by itself. So 72 times 1 divided by 180 equals. Two fifths. Okay, I'm all done. That's conversions. Don't overcomplicate it. It's the same little fraction both ways.